Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, well, I'll be honest. I've been better. I finally caught the dreaded plague. Oh. And um, I tested positive on Tuesday. It wasn't well on Monday. So, <laughs> so I'm so much better today than I was a few days ago. But um, you can hear it in my voice. Um, I, caught the, I caught the dreaded COVID. Well, it's, I'm quite happy that we still got to do this. Like that. Yeah, well, I figured I was not going anywhere, so. <laughs> and um, I might not really sound like myself, but that's okay. okay. That's all right. Yeah. Well, nice can... to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Um, I could just uh, jump around then before getting to Black Lagoon. Sure. So I know uh, in terms of acting, everything started with uh, doing a children's access theater. Oh yeah, I guess that was my first professional, my first professional gig when I got my equity card uh, right out of theater school. I was um, uh, cast in uh, a show called, I can't remember, oh, hang on, Wild Rose and Half a Step. It was a very bizarre play. Um, yeah, and I toured, I toured around uh, to elementary schools and um, that's how I got my professional equity card. Mm -hmm. was 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 that was my first gig out of um, theater school yeah I think I wanted to be an actor when I was very young because my older sister wanted to be an actor and I just wanted to do everything she did um but then then I you know went through different phases this one I was very young and then I went through different phases I thought I wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted to be a vet and all of those things and then um, my first theatrical experience was in the sixth grade I played Big Blue in the Jungle Book um, and, and then my first professional audition, I was so scared I had to go home. <laughs> it was the Christmas Carol and I made my mom leave because I was too scared to go through with it. Um, but yeah, I, I think I always, I was always interested in performing and being on the stage. And, and so I went to university and I thought I was going to be a teacher and teach drama, but then got lured into the into a production, and then I just transferred over into becoming an acting major, and, and then I I was in Edmonton, which is in the middle of Canada. Well, not quite. Um, don't get mad at me, Canadians. Um, <laughs> it's uh, but then I, I I got into an act the acting program at UBC in Vancouver, and so that's when I guess it got really serious. In I won't tell you what year. <laughs> Was there ever any uh, initial aspiration to try and move to LA? Not for me, no. Um, my husband is also an actor and he talked about it a little bit. Um, I had a sister who was living in California. Um, I had friends who lived in LA. Um, I also, um, I ended up going back to school in, the, in 95 or 96 and getting my master's and specializing in <clears throat> voice, <laughs> funny. Um, and I was a voice teacher and a dialect coach. And so I was working with a lot of actors and, and a few of them that lived in LA. And so I would um, go and see them, but I, I, never, I never had any aspirations to, to go to LA. I think it was Trevor Duvall who, who did it the most successfully. May, maybe Michael Donovan as well. Um, David Kay. And, yeah, David McKay, yeah, not McKay, David Kay. I know I have another friend, David. David McKay. Um, so yeah, so, um, but no, I was, I was quite content in, in Vancouver, but then as you know, I, I did six years ago, decide to leave Vancouver and I moved to Washington DC. Yep. So um, that's been a very different journey for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well then in terms of voiceover roles, I know your first one was in uh, Exo Squad. Yeah, that was my first uh, series regular, which was fantastic. I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, <clears throat> I didn't even have an agent yet. And I think uh, this woman, I can't remember which talent agent he was thinking about taking me. She goes, you have a really great voice. Have you thought about voiceovers? And at this point I was, huh? Um, and then she got Scott McNeil to come in and coach me for, uh, I think it was King Arthur. And I didn't get the part, but then I did get an agent. <clears throat> I signed with Madalena Conchi at, at MA Entertainment. Um, and then, yeah, I went for Exo Squad and Kathy Wesselak was the casting director at the time. Oh. She was fantastic. And um, yeah, I booked my first series and had a great time and worked with, that's when I just got in the door and got to know everybody and worked with some amazing people. 
Yeah. Well, that was around the same time too that you had um, your roles on the uh, X Files. That's right. Yeah, I was. I guess I was just really starting out and and getting my stage, <clears throat> not stage, um, voiceover and and film and TV. Yeah, X Files, which was a lot of fun to do that as well. And excuse me, one minute. <clears throat> hmm. Ha. Huh. Um, it's kind of fun now because my because I teach as well. A lot of my students they they watch these shows and and they'll come into class and go. Um, Lisa, I was just watching the X-Files. Was that you? It's like, yes, yes, it was me. So yeah, so X-Files and there was a few other, a few other things that I did, but really it was voiceovers that where I started to work the most and, and, and really start to enjoy myself. Yeah. So that's what I was going to ask next. Was there something that happened that made you want to uh, get a more uh, um, focus on pursuing voiceover? <clears throat> Um, the hours are shorter. <laughs> the pay is fantastic. Um, you don't have to go into hair and makeup. Nobody's concerned about how you look. Um, and um, I don't know, there's just a lot of freedom in me in creating the characters vocally that, that in some ways it's, it's harder to do in, in a studio with the cameras and the hair and the makeup and, and all of that stuff going on too. So, and hitting your mark and, mm -hmm. and all of that, so. So that's where it's like, this is fun. This is where I want to be. Yeah. Well, in terms of anime, um, I think your first one would have been uh, the Fatal Fury movie, My, My Shiranui. You would know better than I would. <laughs> <laughs> I am embarrassed because I, <clears throat> I know I've, I've, I've had the good fortune to do quite a bit of anime, I think. I don't know. It kind of... I'm getting old. So it kind of all blurs into one big event for me. So, um, you know, it's funny. I, I haven't done a lot of conventions or anything like that, but I do remember doing one and somebody asking me all about a character I had played. And, and, and seriously, I was like, you know more than I do. You really do know more than I do. So, um, yeah. So you're probably correct. <laughs> do, you remember how you, do you remember how you personally took the dubbing? Because I know it's kind of different with everybody. I actually enjoy the the precision of it and the 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 mechanics of having to link up with the the lip flaps and so I think it just takes practice. I think it just takes the more you do it, the better you get at it. You start to find little tricks along the way, um, little little mouth noises or sighs. You learn where to breathe, um, and the fact that you know most of the time. You don't have to memorize the lines. Yeah. Um, it's helpful as well. So, so I don't remember it ever being a struggle. I just remember, I think, just having to get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, and and I was I was terrible. I anticipated that fourth beep all the time. Um, all the directors would say, "Okay, you jumped it. You jumped the cue." I'm like, "I know. I'm just so excited." <laughs> so. <laughs> is there is there more of a story then? Because I know that uh, rel relatively early on was uh, Chi Chi in the Dragon Ball. So. so I have I have to be full disclaimer here. I only did Chi Chi a little bit. Right. I was a voice match for I think it was Lara. And um, so I don't even know how much I did. I think she did the bulk of the work and then I seemed to get all the credit for it. So I'm sorry, Lara. Um, um, so yeah, I, I, that one's such a distant, mm -hmm. distant memory too. <laughs> Yeah, but I know that when, again, when my students discover what I've done um, and go start looking up IMDB, that's when they start freaking out. You were Chi Chi? And I'm like, yeah, I guess I was a little bit. So, yeah. Well, with your, um, with your two major women in the Gundam series, who do you think that you personally relate more to? I probably Maru as opposed to Relina, I guess so, mostly because I'm a 55 year old woman. Um, but um, yeah, probably her. And I love the fact that she was the captain of a ship and, and you know, she also had this little fling with, um, I can't remember his name, but I know Trevor Duvall voiced the character. Yep. Um, so probably her as opposed to Relina, but I liked Relina too, mm -hmm. yeah. There's still a, I mean, with with uh, with both of those series too. There's still a huge fan following with the English dub, especially. Yeah, that I know. That's another one that people say to me 
Gundam series and, and their little jaws hit the floor. I think it's really sweet and funny, but I, I get it. I get it. It's, 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 um, yeah, I think these, these, the anime and, and a lot of these shows really do um, speak to a lot of people. So, yeah. Do you also think that you have a personal preference on working on more uh, uh, serious projects opposed to comedic? Oh, I, I think I prefer comedic. Okay. Um, I think I did a series, I can't remember the name of it now, golly gee, and I think it was anime, I'm pretty sure it was, I got to play this, the, one of the bad characters, um, and she was quite funny and was very concerned about how she looked, she always had a compact mirror, <clears throat> I can't remember the name of the series now, Any, anyway, I, I do enjoy the comedic, the comedic stuff as, as well, I find that, I guess the dramatic stuff comes easy to me, and, and that doesn't, I don't mean to sound um, arrogant, but I think I think in some ways that's why I, I got cast in a lot of in a lot of serious stuff. I do remember um, the Hulk. Yeah, I think I was able to turn on a dime. I could play the real strong characters, and then I could also find the the, the sensitivity or the 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 depth, of emotional capacity that the character had, and made them set, feel more real. I guess so. But I I like playing the, the, the comic stuff. I I think that's. Um, a lot of fun. It's hard. It's really, really hard to do to do comedy. Um, and I remember doing it in some commercials. I used to do. I used to play a lot of character stuff, and I, I never got the straight the straight characters for commercial stuff. I never did the you know the taglines or the the announcer kind of narrative voice. I always got the goofy characters. So mm -hmm. but those are always fun to play. Well, I think the character that you were talking about is a uh, Yui in a Soul Soul uh, Soul Taker. Was that it? Maybe. I feel like it was something else though. I remember Soul Taker. That was dark. <laughs> she was kind of funny, yes. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Junkers Come Home, was that one I did? Was, no, there was an, another one where I played a mom, the, the Daiku family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, were like the, they were like the weird superhero family. Right. Yeah, yeah, that one was a lot of fun. And I think, uh, cause I, I did her for pretty recently too, uh, Jocelyn Lee, when played your daughter in that. Right. <laughs> Gosh, she was probably, what, 10 or something? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of amazing young talent in Vancouver. Just incredible, incredible talent. Yeah. Well, and talking about moms and uh, David Kay, I know you got to play uh, his mom in uh, Inuyasha. <laughs> and she was like a big, mystical, beautiful character. Yeah, yeah, it was. That's right. I remember she was very ethereal, wasn't she? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny because it just depends on who's in the studio first. And sometimes you hear what people are doing. And then sometimes you're the first one in there recording the lines down. So you feel like, oh, yeah, I was working with David that day. And then sometimes you, you feel like you weren't. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's just the way it goes with the anime. Who are you, uh, or who were you personally, or still are uh, personally closest with in the Vancouver VO community? Golly, <clears throat> you know, I left in 2016, and I, I've, um, what's so great about that community is I think if I were to walk into the studio today, it would be, it would be like we'd just seen each other the week before, but, um, yeah, I really haven't, I, I haven't, I haven't seen or talked to anybody in a very long time. And then with COVID, I haven't been home for a while. And, um, but I mean, I would consider them all my friends and I have nothing but high praise for all of them. You know, Kathy Wesselek was a <clears throat> big part of me getting into to voiceovers and, and I credit her for showing me the way. Um, oh, Marek is fantastic. Tabitha, oh my God, Tabitha. I would love to have the skill and talent that that, that woman has. Um, Shannon, Ashley, or I see uh, Kathleen, I feel like I'm gonna forget people. And, and um, um, Brian Drummond is, I think, one of the, the finest voiceover actors I've ever met. And he's just such a great guy. And um, often, I mean, one of the last parties I went to in Vancouver before I left was he hosted something at his house. And it's just so great to be around all these amazing, talented, talented people. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of not really in touch with people right now because I decided to go on a bit of an adventure and take my family to Washington, D.C. And 
So, um, but my husband, who's also an actor and a voice actor, Jonathan Holmes, um, we talk about it a lot about going home and what it would be like to get back into to the community and how much we miss it. And even our daughter, Bronwyn, has, has um, you did a few voice gigs before we left. She did a couple of the Barbies and oh. um, she did one of the Lego Star Wars as well. But, but yeah. now she wants nothing to do with acting. Oh. <laughs> she's 16, so, you know. Okay. She won't. She she doesn't know what she's going to do yet. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, still on the topic of people, um, I asked this to every um other Vancouver actor I've interviewed recently. Do you have a special tribute memory for uh, Kirby? Kirby. Moore? Oh, Kirby. Oh, that was a that was a real tough. That was a real tough one. That was a tough day when I heard that news. Um, oh gosh, I can't. I'm trying to remember. I think we worked on the the Mar some of the Marvel stuff was some of my last stuff in Vancouver and you know Kirby was the kind of guy that you I, you wouldn't see him for months and months years even in my case I guess and and then he'd walk in the room and it's like he'd just seen you yesterday and and just so sweet and affectionate and kind um, give you a big hug and just just be genuinely interested in how you were and what's going on and. Um, yeah, just a real, a real, a real sweetheart. And that's, that's a big loss for the community. And, and it makes me think of Gabe as well. Do you know Gabe Kuth? Yeah. Sam, Sam Vincent's brother. Um, just, I adored him. Um, I think we worked on He-Man together. I think that was one of our first shows together. And we just had so much fun. And yeah, and when, and when you lose friends and colleagues like that at such a young age, it's, um, it's a tough one. It's tough, but yeah, just a really sweet, sweet guy. Yeah. What about um any of the uh was your experience working with all the main directors for anime up there always totally fun and great. oh my god, best time. <laughs> James Corgal was like the best. Yeah. It was so much fun. And Carl, I mean it's that ocean group, right? right. Um <clears throat> Most of the time, I, I didn't even care what the project was. I just wanted to go and hang out with those guys in the studio because it was so much fun. And we would just laugh and, and, and yeah, just have a great, great time, even if it was just me in the booth. Um, and then, you know, that was the, my first gig as in, um, not in anime, but um, Prelay was, was Exo Squad and it was at Ocean too. So and I think Carl was one of the engineers and just to see him move up and become one of the top directors in, in the city has is, is just been fantastic. So yeah, James, Carl, <clears throat> you know, and then a lot of the prelay stuff working with Terry Classen and Michael Donovan. And right. I got to work with Sue Blue and Gordon Hunt, uh, Wally Burr. I mean, I, I'm a little older, <laughs> a lot older. Um, I think my, my age is wrong on IMBD, just so you know, but I'm not going to change it. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so I was very fortunate to work with some, some really amazing people. And I'm sorry if I forgot anybody. <laughs> what do you think the, uh, for anime, what do you think the darkest headspace you had to go for your character was? Hmm. Well, I'll be honest, I flipped onto YouTube last night and started scrolling through some of the, like the recap of Black Lagoon because it's been a while. Um, and it's a pretty dark series, full stop. I don't, I don't know. I think on the day and in the moment, I just, I just dig into, I, I, I use my imagination and I don't personally invest too much. Um, not, I shouldn't say that like I don't care, that's not it, but I don't, I separate myself from the character. So I'm not having to, I'm not one of those method actors who has to dig up my own dark, you know, past. Um, so I think just in the moment you serve the character and what you see and you, you give yourself over to what that character needs to express what you're seeing on the screen. Um, and I like to really think outside of myself and, and not, not make it so much about what I'm feeling, but it's more about what I'm seeing and what I want to have happen, be, be a response on the, on the screen. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like I was saying, is that there's some pretty dark themes in there, but it was also one of the show Black Lagoon was so freeing <clears throat> as an actor because 
it wasn't PG and we could curse and say things that we just normally wouldn't normally wouldn't say in animation. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know if I answered that question. I kind of went on a little no. too. <laughs> I do that a lot. Well, speaking of that, uh, speaking of Edda, um, I have found that um, it's kind of different with what I've heard so far. Were you, was that a normal audition or were you autocast? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth of it. I have no idea. James might know, but I can't remember. I mean, I, I was fortunate I did get cast, autocast in a few things there, but um, yeah, I have no idea. Okay. Well, with, with, how many, with how many facets she has, uh, was that hard to get a handle on her character? No. <laughs> no. No, it was fun. It's fun to kind of just jump into that gritty, sarcastic, um, uh, aggressive, you know, character and 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 say things that one probably shouldn't say but yeah no she was she was totally fun to to jump into and be really free with mm -hmm. yeah yeah which part of her could you personally relate the most to them oh golly um hmm i guess just her her disguise as a nun <laughs> and, then, and then having just this this presence of one thing but then underneath just having this roaring um personality underneath that which is i think funny i i i, I think i've put on my on bios in the past the, the gun the gun toting nun is one of my favorite characters mm -hmm. so yeah yeah and i marika told me uh that she got her and James got to um, improvise and edit some of the lines. Did you remember doing anything like that too? Oh yeah, uh, definitely. I remember doing that because things just didn't match up. Yeah. So, um, um, and bless those people that, that have to translate all that. And, you know, th that is a huge feat um, and hats off to them because I think they do a fantastic job. But, you know, sometimes things just didn't match up and, or make sense. And so, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun too. What am I going to fit here? How can we do this and 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 shift and move things and create new things? So yeah, I do have memories of doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you think you have a like single favorite scene or some favorite scenes that you can remember? I think I think it was fun the one where uh, Revy and and Etta almost come to blows and it's like that battle in that back alley or something. Yep. And then and then it's like <laughs> she's like, "We well, gotta walk me to my car." <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I think think that was probably one of the the highlights. Looking at it, I was like, "That's kind of funny." Yeah. Were you and Marika friends at that time? Oh yeah, of course. It, it, yeah. Um, gosh, I haven't seen Marika in years. Um, super talented, amazing person. I remember. I have a vague memory of having dinner once. I think she came over to our house and and had dinner with us and. Um, we were talking about because she moved from Toronto and yeah, just adore her. She's fantastic, so talented, such a lovely, sweet, kind person. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen her in years, and and you know, again, it's like when you see people in the studio, <clears throat> it'd be just like, oh, hey, hi, and and it would be fantastic, and then off you go and live your life. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I mean. Um... Black Lagoon is one of the main general consensus anime where the dub is, you know, one of the best that's ever been done. Really? Wow, that's that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I am honored to be a part of the team. <laughs> um, yeah, I credit I credit the casting for that. I think there's some really great people in that. Just uh, again, as I was watching it and looking at all the names that were scrolling, or or maybe I went to IMBD and looked at it. Um, it's not surprising. And the fact that, you know, we got to rewrite and, and jig it a little bit so that it really um, moved really well. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. That's exciting. Is there something that you would um, personally like to see happen for Etta's character? Golly, I don't know. Um, I, I 
keep her firmly, I trust her firmly in the hands of the creator. I think they probably have a really good vision for her. And um, I'd be happy to see wherever that, wherever that would take her. I don't know, I guess personally, I'd like to see her retire on a, a desert island somewhere with, you know, everything she needs and, and just hang out and, and do nothing. But that might be boring for her. Maybe that's more me yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think she's I think she's in good hands. Mm -hmm. Well, it does sound like you were you would come back as her if there was an opportunity. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, I would. It's been challenging for me moving into the states, mm -hmm. um, and one would say, "Why? That should seem easier," but it's not. Um, and <clears throat> but I, I would, if they would consider it, I would absolutely do it. I know my husband has been working on some stuff that he was doing in Canada, and he's been recording it in the states, so. Um, hopefully they would they would consider that. I think there was one project where Ralph, um, who I still consider my agent, even though I haven't been on the books for several years now, um, I'm just assuming he would take me back if I came back to Canada. I'm not sure where I was going, but there was one project, but they they didn't want to, you know, they have to find the studio here and then loop it all in. But everybody's doing it from home now anyway, so I don't know what the, the big issue is, but, yeah. but um, absolutely. In a snap, I'd go back. I mean, I don't know. I suppose I should think about that. You know, there's a lot of <clears throat> change in the world and and um, representation is a big important thing. And, you know, it is a bit of a violent show and we are living in a time when, when um, you know, you live in the States, don't you, Chris? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on and it's, it's scary. And so, yeah, I guess I have to, I'd, I'd maybe stop for a moment and think about, about some of the bigger questions, but, I also don't think we need to um, censor ourselves as well. I think we just need to be better human beings. Right. So, yeah. And uh, vocally speaking, it does seem like it's kind of just your normal voice. Yeah, I think she's pretty much my normal voice. Yeah, I don't think you can tell today, though. I really don't sound like myself. But yeah, I, I tend to, I, I was often cast more as myself um, than, you know, I didn't play a lot of, kid voices. I think I did in Power Puffs. I did a little boy um, and a few other things, but I tend to be, I tend to be cast more in, in where I sit naturally in my, in my voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that is one thing I like to touch on with voice actresses that, um, cause I found the answer is also different depending on who it is, but do you have a particular process for boy voices? I usually, I usually kind of go to a, something like this and then I deviate from there and then I, if I go up in a little picture, I go down a little picture, I get a little bit more gravel, you know, I usually start somewhere around there and then just morph and find different textures and layers and pitch and um, that's usually how I, how I do it and then the director goes, yes, there, that, so, mm -hmm. and then I go quickly record it so I can remember what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's usually, usually how that happens, but mm -hmm. yeah. And it's often in the attitude and 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 how the character moves them moves themselves in the world that that the the texture and the layers of the voice usually manifests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, before I would move on from Black Lagoon, I did have um, <laughs> Tabitha and Mareka do this. If I typed out something like, could you say it as to the Black Lagoon community as as her? <laughs> I can try, but Chris, you hear my voice; it's pretty ratched. <laughs> try, go ahead, I'll try. <clears throat> uh -huh, uh, and I'm a voice teacher, you know. <laughs> Hold off from messaging me today, you limp dick losers. Jesus is on vacation in Vegas. That sounded good. <laughs> Did it? Really? You're yeah. so kind. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and some people were, and I noticed too, that um, it's sort of a similar character to at a, around the same time after Black Lagoon is... Uh, Hallie and Death Note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, again, I, I, I think I was getting a little typecast there. That's okay, I don't mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess they were quite similar. She was a bit more professional though, wasn't she? She was yeah. a bit more, yeah, businesswoman type, I think. Am I right? Yep. <laughs> okay. <Phew. laughs> Well, I know one of the last anime you did um, was uh, Gintama. Right. Yeah. What did I do in that? <laughs> a, well, you played the you played a boy version of one of the main characters, but you also played a villain that had like a really weird um, 
a really weird blindfold over her eyes. Oh, right. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. I remember. Hang on. I'm going to mute for a second. Right. Yeah, I do remember some kind of weird visor thing. Yeah. Vaguely. And then I, and I voiced a little boy, like a younger character. Yep. Oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, one of the, one of the other anime, like one of them, like the other main boy that you did was playing the uh, little boy version of Michael Michael Adam Thwaites character in a uh, story of Sai and Koku. Cool. Well, that makes sense completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Adam Thwait. <laughs> How's he doing? Did you have you interviewed him? Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's doing a lot of uh, live action work in LA now too. So. I think the last thing I worked with him on was on Warcraft. Yeah. Um, I was the, I was, uh, the dialect coach on that. Um, and then I left the show early because I wanted to go do another show. Um, but yeah, he was one of the, was he an org or something else? Yeah. Yeah. Good guy. Good guy, Adam Poit. Yeah. Raises chickens, brought me eggs. Really good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever close with the Janice Joe? Yes, Janice was in my first show, oh, Exo okay. Squad. Yeah. Oh, she was lovely. I haven't seen her in years. And Terrell Rothery, I mean, I'm t this telling, you know, it's going back. It's going back a few years. Um, yeah, Janice was lovely. Have you, have you interviewed Janice? Is she still doing stuff? She must be. Yeah, she's singing so, more now. Yeah, so talented. Lovely voice, beautiful voice, yeah. Well, I, cool. I, do, I do know that one of the um, only... Uh, women that moved to LA and is still there in LA from Vancouver is Erin Fitzgerald. Oh, I don't know her. Oh, okay. What did she do? She was on, she did a bunch of anime, but she was on Edda, Edda and Eddie and uh, yeah. a lot of original animation stuff. Right, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some super talented young young people coming up and, and because I've been away now for six years, I don't I don't know a lot of them. But um, it's exciting. It's exciting for them. What about with uh, Saffron Henderson? Were you close with her? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, I'm. I mean, you know, in the studio, it kind of felt like you were you were, you were with your best best friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was always a little bit starstruck because her father, uh, Bill, was a musician, and that was totally my era. So I was like, oh my god, yeah, your daddy's really cool. Um, so yeah, she's super talented, so lovely. And she was, I think she was a mom shortly before I was. So <clears throat> it was, you know, talking about kids and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that doesn't have anything to ask too, with the, with the live action work you were doing or just in general, was there, what is the case where you've been the most starstruck with who you were working with or meeting or? <laughs> Oh, this is going to sound so funny. I don't know why. I did Scooby-Doo, um, too. And I played, you know, the, the what's her name? Thelma? Or, yeah, or Velma. Velma. I don't remember. I played one of her groupies. There were three of us. Morgan Brayton and another gal. Um, and at the end of the show, at the end of the movie, from American Idol, Ruben, and yeah. you probably don't. Even, do you remember who, what was his last name? Stoddard or something? Yeah. And he came on and he sang a song and we got to do this big dance number. And when he came in, that's when I was starstruck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And I'm working with Sarah Michelle Geller and Freddie Prince and yeah. Seth. <clears throat> and I work, again, I'm a dialect coach as well. And so I've coached some pretty famous people. Um, and I've been around some pretty famous people. And it was him where I was the most starstruck, which I thought I thought was quite funny. I don't know. I don't know why. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. And when I was and moving to DC, when I, when I saw Madeline Albright, and who's no longer with us, the uh, that was when I was I was most starstruck. <laughs> you know, it was like my first political person I saw on the street. I was like, oh my god, it's it's Madeline Albright. It's Madeline Albright. So I'm a geek. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> since since uh since moving do you predominantly do you do any acting yourself besides teaching now um not really i've 
I've done a few voice stuff kind of down the line for people, um, but, but yeah, that's what I think I was going to say. Ralph called me about something and then they decided that it was just too much trouble. So they ended up going with somebody local. Um, so yeah, just some, some, some voiceover stuff um, down the line. But, but yeah, right now I've really, when I decided to take this position in, in DC and, and really shift my focus to, to coaching and teaching for a little while, um, I knew that that might happen. Uh, and I really, really miss it. So, um, you know, when you finally found me through my boss, which is kind of funny, um, I was like, oh my gosh, totally. I would love to talk about the old days because I really do miss it. And, and I do hope to get back to it at some point in my life, um, get back in the studio. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, just, just for today, um, I got it in from Japan yesterday. I'm wearing my um, badass... Ah. Badass Women shirt from Black Lagoon. Oh, cool. Am I on there? Yep. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So you were in Japan. What were you doing? Oh, no, I just, I just, I just ordered it. Oh, okay. It, it, it came from Japan. Not yeah. US. <laughs> it came from Japan. I was like, what? Wow, that's amazing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so you're a big anime fan. What are your aspirations? Are you, um, do you want to be a voice actor as well? Um, that was my dream job when I started out, and I did take classes for it when I was um, locally here where I am, and uh, after I graduated high school. And it was because I'm I'm in I'm in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. not really like there's a lot of, there's a lot of work in there, but it's mostly radio and not really anything else. But yeah. I've been doing interviews for two years now, so and telling voice actor stories is kind of one thing that I think is so interesting. And uh, you're my 251st. So. Woo! Yeah. Who was your 250th? Oh, uh, it was a guy named Damien Haas. He's um a big content creator, but he's also a, like he has his own voice acting career too. Cool. Well, you have a great voice, Chris. You know, I I I know, you know, anime might not be the the hub there where you are, but you could probably work in radio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it does um it ties into my final question is always asking uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Oh my goodness. Gosh, I wish I had time to think about that. Because I know I'm gonna hang up and go, no, I want something different. Um, I don't know, it's gonna sound so cliche that I was a, um, <clears throat> a kind person and that I cared and that, that people matter um, and that being decent human beings um, and taking care of one another is important that I kind of feel that that was, you know, what was important to me. And, and I think as a teacher as well, um, in helping people find their, their, their authentic voices and, 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 and be in a place where they feel that they can express themselves and, and find joy. So I guess that. Um, and as a voiceover actor, I don't know, or an actor, um, just, uh, uh, having, having, the, finding the joy, um, and, and the, the value and importance in telling stories and, and having a reflection of ourselves to make us, again, just better human beings. I'm all about be decent, be good people. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now. And, <clears throat> particularly living in Washington, D.C., I, I see a lot of that really close and up front. Um, and um, there's a lot of change that has to happen. And it's hard. It's really hard right now. So, But, mm -hmm. but yeah, just be good. Be decent. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. I really don't think it is. Right. So, yeah. And is there something that you want to say to the uh, Black Lagoon community and fans? Wow. I As I watch these shows... I have to be honest and say, I don't know that it's necessarily, I've had, I had so much fun voicing Etta and, and being a part of the show because it was so freeing. Um, but as I talk about, you know, being decent human beings, a lot of those characters um, have some pretty dark sides. However, um, I don't judge them and I don't judge the creators or the people who watch that show. Um, so, uh, I don't, I guess, I guess I just would say thank you. Thank you for letting me be a part of uh, something that's, that's very important to you. 
um, and letting me letting me explore and have fun with Etta and 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 give her life in in a way that that was different from the original voice artist. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, thank you. This was a honor for me. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Chris. It was a lot of fun. I'm sorry about my. Um, oh no, you're fine. The plague, as I call it, but um, it was lovely to meet you and 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 best of luck with everything. And um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we'll have a good rest of your day then. Thanks, Chris. You take care. Bye.